Hey creeps, my name is Cameron Chaney, author of Autumn Crow and Autumn Crow High, Fresh Hell, and welcome back to Library Macabre. Today I have for you kind of a, an informal video. This is just going to be me sitting down <laughs> talking about some Halloween books in my collection. These are all Halloween themed books. We're just going to take our time and go through everything and just have a conversation about Halloween and books and reminisce on old times. So if you have anything to say, definitely let me know down in the comments what you think of these books. If you remember any of these, hopefully they will spark some nostalgia in you and you can say, hey, I read that book when I was a kid. I think the majority of these books are a little bit older, either from the 80s or 90s. Some of these are from like the 2000s. I do have a couple of new things in here, but most of those are going to be in my next Halloween themed book collection video because here I I have about a hundred books and that's not all. <laughs> I have way, way more to show you. I have so many Halloween themed books in my collection. It's crazy. Uh, so I've got a hundred here and I'm going to be back with a hundred more books from my collection. That's right. A hundred more, 200 total, probably even just a little bit more than that. So, uh, this might be a little bit more than 100 right here, honestly. Now, like I said, these are all Halloween themed books. They are not just spooky. I can't tell you how many videos I watch for Halloween book recommendations. And the, the, the person in the video is like, oh, this is uh, The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. It's got demons, therefore it's Halloween. No, it's not. I'm not gonna scam you like that. <laughs> these are Halloween for real. These take place at Halloween. They've got pumpkins on the cover. They celebrate Halloween. And that to me is a Halloween themed book. I would know because I have written them myself. <laughs> so this here is Autumn Crow. It is a short story collection that takes place in the small town of Autumn Crow. I also just released the next book, which is Autumn Crow High, Fresh Hell. This is a novel that takes place in Autumn Crow, follows uh, the seniors of Autumn Crow High in 1993. This is the first book in a series. So if you like uh, Fear Street or Nightmare Hall or Point Horror, Christopher Pike, this is very much in vain of those books. And it's not technically Halloween themed. The, the story itself isn't super Halloween-y, whereas this is, but this does take place at Halloween time. There are Halloween decorations all over the town. If you like Halloween, um, you'll probably really dig Autumn Crow High. So I'm just uh, pitching those to you uh, in case you're interested. Now let's get on to the other Halloween books in my collection. I'm gonna start with the nonfiction books first, and then we're gonna get into like the goosebumps and stuff. Uh, I want to start with nonfiction because I have this amazing book right here, which I just recently got. This is called TV Grime, and it is a fantastic book in vain of TV Guide. So it's basically a TV Guide, except it's all Halloween themed. So these are all Halloween specials that have come out over the years uh, for decades and decades. And this chronicles just about anything you can think of. Now this is just volume one. So there's hopefully going to be more but that really depends on if anybody buys this book. So I'm going to post a link down below in the graveyard uh, so you can go and check this out. You can get this on Etsy. Please, <laughs> please go buy a copy of this. It is totally worth it if you love Halloween and Halloween specials. If you're nostalgic for TV Guide, this is your book. And I really hope more people will buy this because I want to see a volume two so bad. <laughs> now, I am not promoted at all to, to, to sponsor this book. So don't think it's anything uh, I'm being paid to do. I really just love this book and I want to see people buy it. So please go down below, get yourself a copy of this. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see volume two, three, four, forever and ever, <laughs> because there's so many other specials and I want to see them all represented in the TV Grime series. I also have another book about Halloween themed specials and movies. This is called Pumpkin Cinema, the best movies for Halloween. And this is a coffee table style book. It goes over just horror films that are good for the Halloween season. When I first got this book, was a little disappointed that not all of these movies are just Halloween themed. Uh, there's movies in here like Wreck from 2007. There's Return of the Living Dead, which actually takes place on 4th of July. Slither, <laughs> Troll 2. None of those are Halloween themed. So it's really just a book of horror movies. So... I guess for the masses, this is fine since most people tend to watch horror, horror films just on Halloween. 
Whereas for someone like me, I watch horror films all year round. So flipping through this, I'm like, yeah, I watch those every day. I want a book of Halloween themed movies specifically. So uh, it's, it's not the best book for me, but it is a really good book about horror films in general and a really nice list of horror films. So uh, I do recommend this still if you like horror films. Uh, here's another <laughs> nonfiction book. This is uh, Witches, Pumpkins, and Grinning Ghosts by Edna Barth. And this is the story of the Halloween symbols. And this is actually like a children's book. And uh, it's got some really great like, vintage illustrations here, two-toned illustrations. So you've got you know, your blacks and grays, and then just these splashes of burnt orange which is so Halloween to me. Uh, it just tells the story of Halloween. This is from 1972. And my edition is a little bit later. I would say this is probably from the 80s or 90s. I would eventually like to track down maybe a first edition hardcover of this. Another thing I wanna say is that there's a hundred books here. There's gonna be over a hundred books in the next video. I've not actually read all of these. Some of these I've not read. I've just picked them up over the years. Some of these I just recently bought. So uh, don't expect me to know everything there is to know about all of these books. Uh, I've read some of them, but I've not read all of them. Now here's a book I have read, and I've actually read this a couple of times, and I think I started reading it again. Yeah, <laughs> I got to chapter seven. This is A Season with the Witch, The Magic and Mayhem of Halloween in Salem, Massachusetts by J.W. Oker. This is a fantastic nonfiction book about everything that you can do in Salem during the Halloween season. So it's not just a history of Salem. Now this does have the history of Salem and it is very detailed. This is actually kind of a chunky book, uh, but it also is uh, a bit of a travel guide about all of the spooky things you can do in the town during the season of October, or during the season of Halloween, during October specifically. Uh, Haunted Harvest, a collection of eerie poems to celebrate Halloween. This is by Richard J. Anderson, and this is just a teeny tiny little book of Halloween poetry, um, <laughs> which I had ordered on Amazon for just a couple of dollars and then found out that it's super thin. It's probably yeah, it's like 26 pages long, and the illustrations are just photos with a filter thrown on them, so uh, it's, it's not great. This is Llewellyn's Little Book of Halloween. This is a really cute, tiny little book, as you can see. So it's just got like little party things that you can do uh, for, for Halloween parties, uh, snacks, recipes, magic. <laughs> There's some Halloween-related spells in this book. It's just a, a tiny little celebration of Halloween, just in a nice tiny little package. We also have another uh, Halloween nonfiction book. This is The History of America's Darkest Holiday by David J. Skull. It's a nice uh, history on the holiday that we all know and love. Uh, and, and there might not be anything here that's particularly new information, but that's okay. I will read anything about Halloween and I'm probably going to love it. Now, this one is a very, very special book and it's not um, a book of text. It's actually just an art book. This is Nightmares of Halloween Past uh, and this is by Gary Baseman. And this is a beautiful book of Halloween photographs. These are uh, photographs that the author collected. He has, you know, a little introduction here and some artwork, um, but for the most part, this is just a book of really cool photographs that he has collected and compiled into this very uh, highly collectible book. Uh, it is also signed by the author with a little illustration there. I love this book. I look at it all the time. It's just a wonderful volume to have in my collection here in my library, uh, and I love displaying it and flipping through it. And it also smells really good. <laughs> so if you're a book sniffer like me, uh, I recommend it. And last but not least, <laughs> I have a Joanne Fabrics uh, little catalog. <laughs> this came from uh, Joanne Fabrics, I think, in the early 2000s, maybe the late 90s. Why do I have a Joanne Fabrics catalog? Uh, I found it in a thrift store, and it's Halloween, and it reminds me of the catalogs my mom used to get. So I snatched this right up, even though I think I paid a little bit too much for it. I think it was $3 for an eight-page catalog. 
it was worth it for me. <laughs> uh, anyway, now we're going to get into some Goosebumps. I have a whole stack of Goosebumps books here. Actually, this is also Goosebumps. Now you're going to find some duplicates in here because uh, some of these are the same book, but in different languages because I'm a little bit of a crazy collector. Uh, but first, we're going to start with the Goosebumps Haunted Library. This was a promotional item that Hershey's did back in the 90s. I think it was 1996, which was when Goosebumps was at its most popular. Um, what you would do is when you opened up a box of cereal or candy or Doritos, wherever <laughs> this was being marketed, you would find a copy of this tiny little book here called Don't Make Me Laugh. Yeah, this was in boxes of Doritos, Cheetos, and Ruffles. Tiny little Goosebumps book. And when you found this book, there would be a mail-in uh, coupon, or I don't even know how it worked because I was a really little kid when it came out. Um, but you could mail in this, this coupon or form and you would get the next book, which was called Bad Dog. And then if you would mail in the next form, you would get not only a copy of the Halloween game, but also a little haunted library to keep your books in. So the whole reason why I'm showing this off right now is because this has a copy of the Halloween game, which is the rarest Goosebumps book of this collection. The whole thing is very rare and hard to find, um, but this is a tiny little uh, Halloween story written by, by R.L. Stein. Little Goosebumps exclusive. The only way to read it is if you buy uh, the Haunted Library. So there you go. The Halloween game and one of my most prized possessions. I can't tell you how happy I am to own this. I did own this back when I was a kid, but it got lost. And then a friend of mine pulled through and gave me the best Christmas gift of my life. So Goosebumps Haunted Library. Next up, <laughs> we have... The classic, the one, the only, well, as you'll see, it's not the one and only because I have multiple copies of this book. This is The Haunted Mask, my favorite Goosebumps book. This is the first edition, first printing. It still has the uh, cardboard Halloween mask inside. I love this book so much. I love the Halloween special. It is by far my favorite Goosebumps story. And there was a time when I thought The Haunted Mask was very underrated, but I think over the years, people have grown to really appreciate The Haunted Mask for just how Halloween-y it is. It's wonderful. It's like the perfect Halloween story, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad that The Haunted Mask is getting some love. And boy, do I love The Haunted Mask because I have multiple copies, all in different languages. So this one right here has a great cover. Hopefully you can see all of these. This is, let's see, this is the French edition of The Haunted Mask. Very spooky cover. Yet another French edition of Goosebumps with a different cover, which is a little weirder than the other one, a um, little more stylish. But I can't decide which one I like more. <laughs> I like them both a whole lot. This one is from Columbia, The Haunted Mask. Same cover as the American edition. Here we have the Korean edition, which is a little bit newer, but very, very cool. And this one actually has all kinds of interesting illustrations in it uh yeah do i do recommend grabbing this if you're a fan of the haunted mask it's cool to have all of these you know original illustrations inside uh, and then <laughs> we have yet another copy of the haunted mask here this is the dutch edition which is in hardcover and it's got this lanticular cover which is quite cool yet another edition <laughs> of the haunted mask this is another Spanish edition, the UK edition. This is the first printing, which has all of those uh, weird bubbles. I don't know why the UK editions all have these uh, bubbles on the cover, uh, but I, I do like them. They're cheesy, but uh, <laughs> I like them a lot. Uh, and I like how Carly Beth is just like this. I don't know what this means. She's like, come here. <laughs> it's really funny to me. Uh, and then this is a new Vietnamese edition of The Haunted Mask, and it's beautiful. I love this artwork. And there's actually several books that have been reprinted in these editions, and I have all of them. Uh, next up, Haunted Mask 2. This is my first edition, first U.S. edition. Good book. It's not as good as the first Haunted Mask. There's this whole kind of goofy book. Uh, 
plot about cookies <laughs> that kind of made it feel a little bit juvenile to me, but it is still a good book. It's got a great atmosphere and I do recommend reading it. The Halloween episode, the, the Haunted Mask 2 episode is also really good. Next is Scream of the Haunted Mask, which is book four in the Goosebumps Horrorland series. I've not actually read this one yet. I still need to read this. Maybe I'll get to it this Halloween season. I have read this one, though. This is Goosebumps Wanted the Haunted Mask, which I did not like. <laughs> I was actually very disappointed with this book. Uh, I just thought it was kind of weird, and uh, it also didn't really stick with the, um, the continuity of the original uh, Haunted Mask books. I don't know. Uh, I just didn't jive with it very well. Moving on from The Haunted Mask, we've got Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. This is my first edition copy that still has the cards, the trading cards, and the bookmark. Uh, another really great uh, Halloween story. It's, it's a little goofy, but I really enjoy this book. Uh, just a whole lot of fun. And if you've not seen the TV episode, I do recommend it. This is uh, Goosebumps Presents Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, which is like a novelization of the TV episode. I don't know why they needed to do that when they already had the original book, but whatever. Um, this has some photos from the uh, TV episode. And I love how the, uh, the jack-o'-lanterns look in the episode. They just look really cool. So uh, there's that. A very rare book this one is. Uh, next, we have still more tales to give you goosebumps. This is special edition number four, which has all Halloween themed stories. And then Goosebumps series 2000, Headless Halloween. This is another Halloween story, which I have read, but I don't really remember too much about it. Besides uh, a kid gets invited to this Halloween party for these kids that he doesn't even know. And the kids, I think, are monsters or headless or something. I, I barely remember. Um, but I do remember liking it at the same time. Next is Goosebumps Haunted Halloween, which is a novelization of the movie that came out a few years ago in 2018. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the, the sequel, <laughs> I have to be honest. I didn't really like the first movie as much, but uh, Goosebumps 2 definitely felt a little bit more like a goosebump story to me and i like the idea of all of these halloween decorations coming to life so i actually liked this one and i did read this novelization and i actually enjoyed it as well so there you go uh, we've also got some more halloween themed goosebumps books this is goosebumps most wanted trick or trapped and goosebumps horrorland weirdo halloween which has a cool embossed cover so there you go goosebumps. <laughs> but that's not all, because I have more R.L. Stein books over here. He didn't just write goosebumps, of course. I also have his teen point books that he wrote. These are Halloween Night, Halloween Night 2. I have read both of these multiple times, and I don't know why, because I actually don't like these books. <laughs> they have great covers, and they are fun, but at the same time, they're just not great. And yet I've read them over and over again. I've probably read them three or four times. I don't know why. <laughs> but here we go. Halloween Night, Halloween Night 2. Um, I guess there is something to these books. Otherwise, I wouldn't keep reading them. Now, these I do recommend. Uh, this is Halloween Party, which is, I think, book number eight in the Fear Street series. And I also have the uh, early 2000s edition, which is in a library hardcover binding. I love Halloween Party. I think it is so much fun. Uh, it's just got the, the perfect Halloween atmosphere. Uh, and it's it's got a Halloween party at a haunted mansion in the middle of a cemetery. And there's murder. And it's, it's great. So uh, if you've not read Halloween Party in the Fear Street series, you're missing out. It's really good. Here we have Ghosts of Fear Street, which is uh, his middle grade spinoff of Fear Street. And this one's called Halloween Bugs Me. I've not actually read this one before. I actually just recently found a copy of this, finally, after all of these years. Uh, it's got a great cover of a jack-o'-lantern with a bunch of roaches crawling over it. Here we have number 10 in the Nightmare Room series by R.L. Stein. This one's called Full Moon Halloween. I have read this. I just recently read this, like maybe two years ago. 
and I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. It's a nice little werewolf story set on Halloween. The Halloween party in this is actually a lot of fun as well. I kind of wish I could go to this Halloween party. Um, there's also a great episode adaptation of this book for the Nightmare Room TV series, and I highly recommend checking it out. It's really, really fun. Very cheesy. Don't get me wrong. It's cheesy as hell, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, next, we have When Good Ghouls Go Bad by R.L. Stein, which is a novelization of the TV special. Uh, it's a TV movie starring uh, Christopher Lloyd. Really, really good movie. I know people who don't like it, but I love that movie, and I've watched it every year at Halloween time since it aired on ABC Family. It's such a good special, uh, and I think it has a lot of heart and a great Halloween atmosphere. Uh, the novelization is also a whole lot of fun. I read this when it came out and loved it. I actually have this bookmark in it as well, which uh, is a promotional for the movie. Uh, a lot of fun. I don't know if this is rare. I know it's not in print anymore, but if you're able to get your hands on a copy, I would do it. It's pretty good. All right, now we're moving on from R.L. Stein, and we're getting into some more point books. These are all Halloween-themed point horror books. So we've got Trick or Treat by Richie Tankersley Cusick, another really good one. <laughs> I've read this a couple of times. Uh, I do know some people uh, said that it's kind of boring, and I guess I, I see that <laughs> because, you know, it's very formulaic. It's got all the tropes of a point horror book, so maybe it can get a little bit tedious, but I like those tropes, so I actually really enjoy this one. Uh, this is one that I have not read. This is October Moon by Michael Scott. It takes place, of course, during October, and it's a werewolf story. Very cool cover. It's kind of, uh, it's got this shiny kind of uh, foiling over the embossed letters, and even the werewolf and the moon are embossed as well. Very cool cover. Um, this one's also pretty rare. It took me a long time to find this. And now that I finally own a copy, I would like to get to it soon, but I don't even know if I'm going to get to it this October. I can't believe October is already here. It really snuck up on me this year, guys. I, I can't even tell you. <laughs> it just all of a sudden it was here and I'm like, oh my God, I have so much I need to do, which is why I'm trying to do some simpler videos that are not really edited because I just don't have enough time and I need to get videos out for you guys. Uh, next up, not a horror book. This is Sweet Valley High, number 109, and it is called Double Crossed. It takes place at a Halloween party. That's pretty much all there is. <laughs> uh, it's the only thing that's halloween -y about this book is that it takes place at a Halloween party. Um, it does have lots of Halloween on the cover. You know, you've got uh, one of the characters dressed up in a witch costume. I'm guessing that must be I don't know. I don't know who that is. I thought maybe it was Jessica Wakefield, but I, she's got dark hair, so she's a different character. Um, I've got these pumpkin lights strung up, so pretty cool cover on that one. Here is another 90s young adult, more of a romance, but this is the Halloween special of the series. So this is Freshman Spirit by Linda A. Cooney. And it is a book in the Freshman Dorm series. So like I said, it's more of a romance series, but this one I think has to do with like a, uh, they do a, a Ouija board and then the, the dorm becomes haunted by a poltergeist. It sounds like a whole lot of fun to me. So I would love to read this one soon. Halloween Party. This is by Wendy Corsi Staub, and it is basically just a Halloween slasher. Uh, would love to read this one as well. This is a very rare book, so good luck getting your hands on this one. But if you can, I hear it's pretty fun. This one is new. This just recently came out, maybe four years ago or so. This is called Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rao, who I actually really like, even though she's not a horror author by any means. She actually writes kind of romance books for teens, contemporary books. This is her graphic novel. And it is about these two characters who work on this pumpkin farm and they're in the middle of their Halloween festival. And uh, one of the characters has a crush on this one girl and this girl here is trying to uh, help him build up the courage to ask her out. And it's just a cute, cozy little book with a lot of Halloween atmosphere. There's actually <laughs> this snack that they serve at the Halloween festival. And I wanna see if I can find it here because it looks delicious. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it for you. Um, but basically, it's two pieces of pumpkin pie smushed together with ice cream in the middle. And it's on a stick. 
<laughs> and I think it's also dipped in chocolate, uh, which maybe sounds disgusting to some of you, but to me, it sounds delicious and I'd love to try it sometime. Next up, I've got quite a few Hocus Pocus themed books here. I mean, Hocus Pocus, it's a classic. <laughs> Who doesn't love Hocus Pocus? This is Hocus Pocus and the all new sequel, which when I picked this up a few years ago, I thought it was going to be terrible. I actually love it. I think it's a really good sequel. It is actually very well done. So the first half of this book is a novelization of the, the movie. And then the next half is the, uh, the all new sequel. And it's good. I really wish they had ad adapted the sequel here <laughs> for the movie. And they didn't. They totally ignored this and made a totally different thing for the sequel. I actually did not care for Hocus Pocus 2. I, I don't feel like I'm in the minority there. I feel like there are some people who loved it, but for the most part, I think a lot of people didn't really jive with it. Um, I just, it had some good moments, but I don't know. It just didn't feel right to me. However, if they had adapted this, I think I would have loved it. Mostly because they would have pulled all of the original characters and brought them back. That would have been awesome. Um, I also have this Hocus Pocus spell book. This is a guide to spells potions and hexes for the aspiring witch, uh, Salem witch. And it is uh, just uh, basically <laughs> what you would see in the Book of Shadows from the Hocus Pocus movie. And then we also have the Hocus Pocus illustrated edition. So this basically takes the adaptation here and uh, puts it in a book of its own, but it also includes illustrations by Gris Grimley. I also have the first edition of It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown by Charles Schultz. This is the original book that adapted the, um, the TV special, which of course is my favorite Halloween special of all time. Uh, so basically it just takes <laughs> all of the images from the special and makes it into a little picture book. It's very cute. And I'm so happy to have a first edition in beautiful condition. It's another one of my most prized possessions here in the library. Speaking of which, <laughs> I also have The Stranger by Chris Van Allsburg, which isn't necessarily a Halloween story as much as it is just a fall story. There's a lot of uh, autumn imagery, lots of pumpkins and fall colors. This is a children's picture book about a, uh, a farmer who accidentally runs over a stranger in the road one day with his truck and the stranger wakes up but he doesn't remember his name or who he is so they the family takes the stranger in and they start to notice some very strange things around the farm uh, the leaves aren't changing colors the animals all seem to be acting strangely and the stranger starts to realize that maybe he's not supposed to be there and he needs to go away and it's actually a very sad existential story that uh is equal parts creepy and just really melancholic and it makes me cry every time i read this book now we're going to get into some sleepy hollow themed books i love sleepy hollow uh one of my favorite stories of all time the headless horseman is one of my favorite halloween images i feel like he could be the mascot for halloween uh, so we've got a bunch of hollow uh, sleepy hollow themed books here uh, first off i have this young adult horror series from the early 2000s. This is written by Christopher Golden and Ford Little Gilmore, and it's a series of four books. So these all take place in Sleepy Hollow. We've got The Hollow book number one. This is called Horseman. So obviously they chose to do The Headless Horseman first, and the rest of these are more like ghost stories. So we have one called Drowned, which is about a drowned ghost, mischief, and enemies. I've actually not read these. <laughs> I've wanted to read them every year since I bought them and I still haven't gotten to them yet. So maybe this year I'll read the first book. We'll see. I also have Sleepy Hollow Children of the Revolution. This is an adaptation from the TV series that came on a few years ago. I watched the first couple episodes and I did like the show very much and I would like to get back to it and watch the rest of the series. Horsemen. I actually just picked this up. This is A Tale of Sleepy Hollow by Christina Henry. This is an adaptation of the Sleepy Hollow legend that takes place at that time period, but also brings it to the modern day. I believe it kind of jumps back and forth. 
There's another one that came out recently called Raising the Headless Horseman, which is basically the exact same plot, <laughs> verbatim. Um, and it was a young adult book published by Disney. I read that last year and despised it. I thought it was just a terrible book. The writing was just, God, the author really phoned it in. Um, I'm hoping this one's a little better. I've actually heard good things about this one. So uh, this is probably the one I should have read first because I feel like the one I read last year just kind of took this and stole the plot and just adapted it for teens. It's not good. Uh, this is another young adult one. This is called Rise Headless and Rise. It's book one in the, Dr in the Jason Crane series. This is kind of a big long series of books uh, it takes place in the modern day, but it follows Jason Crane, who is a descendant of Ichabod, I assume. And I've heard that this is actually really good as well, though I haven't read it yet. This one I have read, and it's fantastic. This is called Legends of Sleepy Hollow, The Lost History of the Headless Horseman by Christopher Rondina. This is a fantastic book. Not only does it have the original Sleepy Hollow story included, but it also has uh, an actual historical account of what might have inspired the Headless Horseman and trying to find out if the Headless Horseman is actually real, that maybe Washington Irving was inspired by a real being, a real presence. So this is a lot of fun. I won't spoil it for you, but the author really does a deep dive into the original legend and it's fascinating. So check it out. It's highly recommended. And then we also have A Legend of Sleepy Hollow plus Rip Van Winkle. This is the Great Illustrated Classics Revised Edition. I grew up with these books. <laughs> these were the classics that I read when I was a kid. I didn't read the original books. I started with these. And it is a really good series. And if you're going to give your kid any revised versions of classics, these are the ones to give them. Uh, they're the basic story, you know. Uh, they give you everything that you need from the original stories but in a, a writing style that's much easier to comprehend and digest for kids. Uh, so this is the Sleepy Hollow version of that. And also we've got the Classics Illustrated Graphic Novel Edition, uh, which I also read many, many times growing up. And yet another one, we've got Treasury of Illustrated Classics, Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle. This is just another <laughs> revised version of Sleepy Hollow. I also read that one growing up. We've got the Legend of Sleepy Hollow Wishbone book, which if you grew up in the 90s like me, you probably loved Wishbone. I know I did. Uh, it's just the cutest thing in the entire world. So uh, yeah, I had to grab this for my collection. I've got a whole bunch of Wishbone books. I haven't read this, but I really want to read it because I'm sure it's a, a whole lot of fun and very cute. I also have the Sleepy Hollow novelization here which is, I think it includes, yeah, it includes the original story by Washington Irving, but it's also a novelization of the Tim Burton film, which I just re-watched in 4K, and it was beautiful. I highly recommend picking up the new 4K release if you haven't. Um, we also have a little golden book, which adapts the uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow uh, Adventures of Ichabod <laughs> uh, movie from Disney. This book is adorable <laughs> and uh, it's basically just the Disney movie just uh, in a very condensed form here and then we've got two picture book adaptations of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow with great illustrations both are very different this has more of a goofy style and this one is a little more traditional um, let's see this one's illustrated by Robert Van Nutt and this one is illustrated by Russ Flint. Two very different styles. I love them both. And now I am actually going to do a cut here because I need to rearrange my books. It's getting a little out of control and I could also use some water actually. So uh, we're going to cut for just a minute and we're back. Just a reminder before I start on the next stack here or the next three stacks, Please, please, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a like. It's free. It takes just a minute and it really does help to support the channel. Um, anyway, moving on, we're going to be looking at some adult horror Halloween books. And then we're going to get into my signed limited editions of which I have a whole bunch. And they're beautiful, beautiful books. First off, a book that I've talked about a lot that I don't feel like enough people take my recommendation on, but I do recommend this book highly. This is called Red Harvest by Patrick C. Green. 
This is the first book in a trilogy, which is called The Haunted Hollow Chronicles. If you like Autumn Crow and you want something that takes place in a small town where they're celebrating Halloween and you've got all those cozy vibes, but you also have the, the darker, gorier side of horror, I recommend this. It's really good. You've got this monster that uh, is unleashed on Halloween and starts wreaking havoc on the town. It's great. It's cozy. It's funny. It's a little trashy. There's lots of fun gore, uh, but it all also has those, those cozy elements that I love in my Halloween books. So please check it out. We also have The Halloween Store and Other Tales of All Hallows Eve by Ronald Kelly. This is another one that I've talked about a lot on my channel. I highly recommend this collection of short stories. It's fun. It's cozy. It's devilish. You've got all of those uh, Halloween vibes, the Halloween atmosphere. It's very strong in this book. Next, we have a novella that I also highly recommend. This is The Last Night of October by Greg Chapman. This is about uh, an old man who is bedridden and he hates Halloween. He's a bit of a Scrooge, but you find out there's actually a reason why he hates Halloween and it's... Uh, it's because there's a certain trick-or-treater that shows up every year, and if he answers the door, this trick-or-treater will probably kill him. Uh, but one night, one Halloween night, his caregiver makes the mistake of opening the door for this trick-or-treater, and all hell breaks loose. It's a very creepy story. I get chills, actually, just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, check it out. It's good. It's really good. He also wrote a book called The The End of Halloween, Five Tales of All Hallows' Eve. It's got some really good Halloween stories. It's very short. <laughs> like, you could read this book in a single sitting in, you know, 30 minutes. But it is good, and I do recommend picking this up if you want a little bit extra from Greg Chapman. Another great one. This is A Night in the Lonesome October by Roger Zelazny. This is a classic Halloween story. It uh, takes a bunch of literary characters. You've got, um, I think you've got Jack the Ripper, you've got Frankenstein, I believe you have Dracula in this, Sherlock Holmes, and it combines them all in this uh, All Hallows' Eve story told from the perspective of Jack the Ripper's dog. <laughs> and um, I don't want to give away what the, what the motive is of all of these characters, but it is a very interesting story. A little bit slow. You have to have a lot of patience with this book, but it is interesting to read from the dog's perspective. It's very cute. So, A Night in the Lonesome October. Not to be confused with the book by uh, Richard Lehman. This is a completely different book. Here we have a brand new Halloween anthology. This is called Halloween Horror Stories, edited by Henrique Couto. And uh, I've not actually read this yet. This was just given to me by the editor and I do want to dig into it before Halloween is over, uh, but just a nice little Halloween collection here if you're looking for some short stories. Another short story book that I highly recommend, this is Greetings from Moon Hill. This is by Anthony J. Rapino, and this is also a lot like Autumn Crow in that it takes place in a small town uh, called Moon Hill Valley, and all of the stories are kind of interconnected. This is also a town that celebrates Halloween year round. So if you like Autumn Crow, highly recommend this book. It's very, very good and not enough people are reading it, which is kind of a crime because it's so good. So, so good. Uh, it's also a nice beefy book that you can dig into and read all throughout October. Do it. You won't be disappointed. At least I don't think you'll be. If you're like me, you won't be disappointed. Here's another short story collection. This is Doorbells at Dusk, edited by Evans Light. This is another one I've talked about a lot on my channel. It's a really great anthology by a bunch of different authors, all with this wonderful Halloween atmosphere. You can't go wrong with this book. And <laughs> next up are these massive tomes, which you can't make a video about Halloween books without including these books. Unless, that is, you haven't been able to find a copy of them, which uh, they are a bit rare, especially the second book. This is October Dreams, A Celebration of Halloween, edited by Richard Chismar. This is huge. <laughs> it's so big. I've not read this entire book. I've only dipped into it a few times to read certain stories, but it is absolutely magnificent. And if you love Halloween, you owe it to yourself to 
buy this book and to read it. Now I have the limited edition hardcover from Cemetery Dance. This is available in like a trade paperback, which I think is actually out of print, but you can get it a little bit easier than you can get this book. Now, October Dreams 2, I don't think was ever published as a, as a trade paperback. You can only get the limited edition hardcover. So this one is actually very collectible and very hard to find. I got super lucky with this book and found it at Half Price Books. It wasn't cheap. <laughs> uh, it was like 40 or $50. Um, but I still needed to grab it for my collection. It's not quite as big as the first book, and I've not actually read any of these stories, so I can't tell you if it's as good as this one, but I imagine it probably is, and I'm so happy to own these books. These are really, really good. Another one that I'm actually really happy to own, this is A Haunted Halloween by Paul Melnixic. And this is the limited edition from Dark Regions Press. And it's just a little collection of Halloween stories with beautiful illustrations. It's got this nice ribbon bookmark here. Uh, you can get this in a trade paperback version, though I believe that one might be out of print. Uh, still, you'll have an easier time getting that book versus this one, which I actually kind of had to search for. I ended up getting a very good deal on this one, but uh, it took a long time to find it. Another really good book. This is Devil's Night by Curtis M. Lawson. Talked about this book a lot. I love it. Uh, if you're at all familiar with uh, Devil's Night in Detroit, this is all about that. It takes place in the 80s on Devil's Night, which is the night before Halloween. If you've seen The Crow, you know, same, same thing. Uh, but all of these stories take place on the same Devil's Night. So you see certain characters kind of cross over, but for the most part, it's just, you know, a, a collection of short stories and they're great. <laughs> there are a couple stories in this that I still think about after a couple years of reading it. Um, really, really good stuff. This is the signed limited edition hardcover, but you can, I think, get a trade paperback version. Do it. It's good. It's really, really good. I have a bunch more signed limited editions here. These are all from Cemetery Dance, who does great books. If you've not heard of them, I don't know where you've been. Uh, but this one is Hallow's Eve by Al Sarantonio. Has a really great uh, cover of this pumpkin-headed man. I love that. I've not actually read this one, but I want to read this soon. Um, next up, classic. We've got Dark Harvest. This is by Norman Partridge. Everybody talks about this book. You've probably seen the paperback edition all over Instagram and booktube. Uh, it's become very popular and there's actually a movie adaptation that's coming out this year. I think it's this year. I hope so because they've been trying to make this movie for years and years. Uh, it's really good. It takes place on Halloween. It's about this town um, where all of the kids under the age of 18, all of the boys, are required to go and look for, I think he's called the Pumpkin Man, uh, this the October Boy, sorry. And they have to find the October Boy, which is this pumpkin-headed scarecrow. And I believe they're supposed to kill him. It's been probably 10 years since I've read this book, so it's a little fuzzy for me. Um, but it's very literary. If you like Ray Bradbury's, you know, like the Halloween tree, it's a little bit of a slow burn, so keep that in mind. But I think it really pays off. And I'm so excited for the movie. I can't wait to see it. Uh, I should probably reread the book before I see the movie. Uh, this one is by the same author. It's called Johnny Halloween, Tales of the Dark Season. I don't think it has anything to do with Dark Harvest, um, just a collection of short stories, but this is also the signed limited edition from Cemetery Dance. I don't think you can get this in a trade edition, unfortunately. Next up, we've got Harvest Moon by James A. Moore. Look at that cover. <laughs> It's so good. It's so, so good. The Halloween Children by Brian James Freeman and Norman Prentice. Uh, Halloween Land by Al Sarantonio. Another Al Sarantonio book. Al Sarantonio's Orange Field, which I believe these are all taking place in the same town. I've not read these, so I'm not sure. And then Halloween and Other Seasons by Al Sarantonio which is a collection of short stories. So those are all of the signed limited edition hardcovers. And now we're gonna get into some vintage horror paperbacks because it would not be Library Macabre without some vintage horror paperbacks, let's be real. 13 Horrors of Halloween, a little collection of Halloween stories edited by Isaac Asimov. 
We've got Halloween, which is by Gary L. Holloman. This looks like a lot of fun. I've not read it, but I would love to read this eventually. We've got Richard Lehman's All Hallows' Eve, which I almost read last year. And everyone in the comments of my videos was like, don't read it. It's terrible. And I was like, but I want to read it. And they're like, but don't do it. It's terrible. And I was like, oh, fine, <laughs> but I'm going to read it. I don't care what people say. I really don't listen to reviews. I like to read books on my own and figure it out for myself. And if everybody's right, um, that's fine. I, I, I want to try it out on my own and see how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, All Hallows Eve by Richard Lehman. And then here we have Night in the Lonesome October, which is what I referenced earlier. Uh, I've not read this either, but I do hear this is his better Halloween themed book, and I should probably read this one before All Hallows Eve. Uh, we'll see. I like Richard Lehman. <laughs> I know he's kind of controversial, um, but I, I have enjoyed what I've read of his work. I think he's kind of, uh, he's out there. <laughs> <laughs> but a little tongue-in-cheek. I feel like he was a little more self-aware than people give him credit for, but I don't know. I don't know the guy. <laughs> Next up, we have Hobgoblin by John Coyne. This is a very famous book. Uh, it was during the, the satanic panic craze where everybody thought Dungeons and Dragons was evil. Uh, this takes place on Halloween night and kind of capitalizes off the satanic panic. I've not read it, but it sounds insane. The Mance by Lisa W. Cantrell. This was the winner of the Bram Stoker Award of that year. And the sequel, which is called Torments. Great covers on these books. Actually, I think my copy of this is signed. Yeah. This was sent to me by a viewer. So uh, thank you so much. This is so cool to have. Next up, we've got uh, a couple books by David Robbins here. Three books by him, actually. So he wrote a lot of Halloween-themed books. We've got Halloween, which I tried to read, and I didn't get very far. I didn't think it was very good. I thought it was actually kind of boring. I want to get back to it, though. I don't usually DNF books. I just kind of put them down, and I say, I'll get back to it later, because maybe I'm just not in the mood for it, you know? Prank Night, another Halloween-themed book by that author, and Spook Night, which looks so good. <laughs> we also have Pranks by Dennis J. Hignan, and this has the craziest cover I've ever seen. I don't know what's happening, but it looks awesome, and I want to read it. Stunts by Charles L. Grant. This is his Halloween-themed book. The Animal Hour by Andrew Claven, who wrote Don't Say a Word. You know, the Brittany Murphy movie is based off of his book. Uh, this one takes place during Halloween. And last... But not least, because it's not Halloween without Michael Myers, am I right? We've got Halloween 2, the novelization, very rare book published by Zebra Books. I'm so glad to have this. This is uh, really, really cool to have. I've not read this one. I've read the novelization for the first Halloween, and I love it. And yes, yes, I did pre-order that limited edition hardcover that's coming out. I can't wait to get it. I'm just saying that because I know everybody's going to comment, hey, did you get that book? Yes, uh, of course I did. <laughs> of course I did. And then next up, lastly, we've got, of course, the novelizations for all three of the newer Halloween films. So we've got Halloween 2018, we've got Halloween Kills, and we've got Halloween Ends. I've not read these. I'm kind of notoriously not a fan of the newer movies. Um, but I do want to read these because I hear they're actually really good. And uh, I'm kind of hoping that the novelization of Halloween Ends will fix that movie for me because I wasn't a fan. I'm sorry to all those who were a fan. I don't understand, but okay. <laughs> Teach their own. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. I will be back very soon for another 100 Halloween books from the Library Macabre. Please, please, please don't forget to check out my books, Autumn Crow and Autumn Crow High, which are available right now. Don't forget to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested. And let me know what you think of all these books. If there's any that I said I haven't read yet that I really need to check out this October. I'd like to squeeze in at least a couple more books to my TBR. Uh, but it's pretty packed as it is, obviously. Uh, thank you all for watching. And I will catch you in the next episode of Library Macabre. Later, creeps.